one, two. Oh, thank you. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a good and relaxing break. Um, we're now going to move on um, as swiftly as possible uh, to talk uh, a similar topic. Uh, Bashir Aguash, who's a journalist and writer with Radio Marshall Free, Ra uh, Radio Free and Radio Liberty, is going to discuss with us uh, Afghanistan's potential again to become a terrorist hub. And any of us that are old enough to remember 9-11 uh, know what can happen if that uh, comes out. And then we're going to go to Dr. Christine Fair, whose CV runs so long uh, with so many distinguished uh, appointments and responsibilities that I'm not even going to begin to talk about them, except it is in all the trouble spots that we're discussing. And we're going to go there into essentially what we touched on is Pakistan's conundrum and how to resolve that. Following that, we're going to wrap up with um, the man who's possibly going to be our next uh, Secretary of State for International Trade, uh, Barry Gardner. Um, and if any of you were lucky enough to watch Question Time last night, you would see how with pragmatism, detail, and extreme courtesy, you could see him beginning to win round with the persuasion somebody who vehemently believed in a no-deal Brexit. And I recommend that anybody who feels a, a temper flaring here that they follow Barry Garden's tutorial in how to carry out a debate. <laughs> so firstly, Bashir, uh, can you kick us off? Thank you. Thank you. And I think it's, uh, it's a well-deserved time to talk about peace after that break. Uh, but we are going to talk about Taliban uh, peace talks with the US and what's happening in Qatar and Russia mostly. Uh, as you may know that from last year, the US uh, 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 representatives on many levels are talking to the Taliban, the Afghan Taliban. And mostly they have been to, for example, Khalil Zad, Zalmay Khalil Zad, he has been to UAE, Qatar, and uh, Kabul, Islamabad, and he also been to European countries uh, in this process. Uh, one thing that we are going to talk about this uh, later on is that they have excluded the Afghan government in these talks. And uh, we will see how that could influence these talks. But let me talk about the positives. You know, it's a, it's a good thing that these talks are happening at least after 17, 18 years of the Taliban war. At least somebody is talking to them. Uh, and maybe that Khalil Zad is uh, representing uh, the US government, but he's uh, basically he's an Afghan. Uh, so he also have good experience with the Afghan authorities and Afghan uh, warlords and Mujahideen and the current government. And uh, he has some personal friendship with some of the elites in Afghan politics. So keeping that in mind everybody was happy that Khalil Zad is leading these negotiations with the Taliban from the US side uh, and then there were face-to-face -face meeting happened uh, in UAE and in Qatar and uh, I think uh, if I'm not wrong there were seven rounds of talks and still going on uh, the continuity of these talks show that there is at least uh, some kind of hope that both sides want to talk about issues that uh, are rising uh, in the region and in Afghanistan. And there is hope that these uh, talks will continue and uh, will uh, uh, reach a point that at least something will come out of this. There are two sides of this, what the Taliban want and what the Americans want, because the Afghan side is not in these, like the Afghan government is not at least in, the, in these talks. The Taliban are not talking to the Afghan government because they say that they are, it's a puppet government and it's, uh, uh, they are in war with the Americans. So that's why they are talking to Americans. The Americans are those who make decisions. Uh, and that's why they, they, they are not talking to, to the Afghan government, they are talking directly to the US. The Taliban want them to withdraw from Afghanistan as soon as possible. 
and they have proposed uh, to give them a timeline. Uh, on the other hand, they also want to have uh, changes in Afghan constitution, and they want to make it more Islamic. Uh, I don't know the the president, the president of Afghanistan has already said that Afghan constitution is more Islamic than any other country. But what they want is uh, we don't have the details yet. Uh, what happened between Khalilzad and the uh, Afghan Taliban that our sources tell us uh, that they have al also proposed uh, a joint military commission between uh, the Taliban and the Afghan government. They want to have a joint military commission for uh, six months at the beginning and then they could continue to have it for one year. And they want uh, this commission to make basic and main decisions. And they say there, on, there will only be three ministries in Afghanistan at this period of time. Uh, the rest of the uh, decisions will be taken by the, this commission. And uh, this will oversee the negotiations uh, to uh, succeed. Uh, we will talk about this, that why it won't work because the, the Afghan government is not part of it. Uh, and they also want to have a share, the Taliban also want to have a share in the government. And most of the Taliban that I as a journalist talk to, they, they want to have a big junk of this government because they say that we are winning this war and therefore it's American that they want to withdraw and they, they want to basically, in their words, run away. So therefore, uh, we should have the upper hand and we should get most of the, the, the government uh, parts or like the, whatever the, the provinces or the ministries that are going to uh, be uh, divided. What the U.S. want, uh, so far we know that the, the Mr. Trump is uh, increasingly impatient about this war and he has said that we want to withdraw. And uh, uh, they, they want to withdraw as soon as possible too. Uh, but they also want to make sure that the terror groups that are operating from Afghanistan, and there are like 22 groups uh, that the NATO has said that are operating in Afghanistan, and they could have an agenda to expand their war uh, and there could be another 911 happening. So therefore, America wants the Taliban to disconnect themselves from Al-Qaeda, from ISIS, and other groups, uh, as Taha was mentioning before, the Pakistani uh, uh, militant groups. Uh, they also want to make sure that the Afghan uh, soil is not used against any other country, which means uh, um, America again. And, but the problem with this is that they, they are talking to the Taliban just like as if they are a state. Uh, for example, a group cannot make sure that somebody will not attack on a country. Only states or only government can, can make that possible because they, they have the means of controlling uh, some, uh, some of the, the, the groups that they, they could have potential to attack other countries. Taliban, for example, uh, they, they could say that, you know, somebody attacked America, it wasn't part of us. I mean, like the, it was a splinter group or something or something. And uh, therefore, the, the logic uh, behind asking the Taliban to make sure that nobody attacks America or any other country, for example, India, uh, doesn't have weight uh, because the Taliban cannot fulfill this promise. Even if they guarantee, they won't be able to make sure that it happens. The other challenge with uh, the negotiations that are going on, that Taliban is a very radical group. And these talks uh, is providing the Taliban a platform to give uh, propaganda for themselves. They are, that they have changed. But in fact, they have not. And you may have seen pictures of the Taliban uh, recently. There were like, a day before yesterday, there was a conference in uh, Moscow, and they were talking to all these women journalists uh, in Russia, and people are making fun of these uh, pictures uh, on social media, saying that the Taliban are now in heaven, 
talking to, uh, to, to, the, to the people that they want to talk to. Uh, but on a serious note, the, the, the Taliban are using these kind of opportunities for themselves to tell people that we are changed, we can talk to women. But on the ground, for example, last month they were in Moscow, they were talking to, uh, giving interviews to all these women and the Abbas Sanakze, who is the deputy uh, head of Qatar office, he said that they want and they will give uh, you know, women their own rights when they come to power. But at the same time, what they did was they, they lashed a woman and a man in Nuristan because they uh, participated, that woman participated in a wedding ceremony of uh, her brother and danced in that wedding. So while Abbas Tanakzai was saying in Moscow that uh, they will give opportunities to women and it's all good and Taliban have changed, on the other hand, their foot soldiers were lashing and beating women just for dancing in his, in his own family wedding. So, so the, 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 the problem with these talks is that the, you can humanize the Taliban but on the ground, they have not changed, and people are suffering the same way as they were in the 90s when they were governing. The, the other problem is the foot soldiers. I mean, like, even if these talks are prevailed, if they are succeeded, what would we do with the foot soldiers? Because you have fought a war saying that Americans are infidels, uh, Afghan government is puppet and infidel, and now you are going to talk to them? What would you tell those soldiers that are fighting on this ideology? That why are, uh, have they, for example, you know, there's another joke about Russia that now Soviets is a Muslim uh, country and the Soviets have converted to Islam because the Taliban are talking to them. But uh, uh, there was a time that they were, we were fighting them because they were infidels. So how would you convince these fort soldiers that everything, all infidels are good now, and now let's talk to them, they're, they're good people. And the, this, the, the, there it comes to other uh, terror groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda, they would use these foot soldiers who are radicalized and who don't want to be part of any negotiations, are in a way that uh, currently happening. So these fighters will go join ISIS and Al-Qaeda and other groups are make uh, another, uh, some kind of uh, a movement or an organization or terror group. So that's why these uh, talks won't succeed unless you have the Afghan government in it and then you have a comprehensive program for, of de-radicalization and also the uh, integration of these soldiers into the society, these, uh, sorry, the, 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 the Taliban fighters into the society as well. And then there is a question of uh, regional countries that uh, is uh, uh, the topic of this uh, seminar. Pakistan, as we already, you know, many people talk about it, uh, uh, Pakistan would continue to have some kind of influence on the Taliban or any uh, setup that is going to happen in next future. And that's why they are saying that they have, they have uh, said on the record that they, they have influence on the Taliban and they will use it uh, for uh, a peace process. But we see that how they use it. On the other hand, the Taliban are not uh, fully uh, sincere in these negotiations. Just today, they attacked uh, a convoy of the NATO forces and killed two soldiers and, uh, and uh, injured eight other people. So I'm curious to know that how would the American public uh, would uh, come to terms with this. That you know, on the other hand, on one hand you are talking to the Taliban, and the other hand they are for killing our soldiers. The other problem is uh, currently Russia. Russia is meddling in Afghanistan as the way they were doing before, and uh, the Taliban are selling the point that ISIS is here. And if we are not there, the ISIS will go into Central Asia and conquer all these countries because, you know, Central Asia is important ideologically to the ISIS. And uh, also the Iran question is that the Taliban is closing to Iran saying that, you know, we will prevent ISIS from coming to you and butchering you because you are Shia country. Uh, 
so and there is another huge question about this power distribution even if that these these talks are succeeded how would you uh, continue to give uh, the Taliban uh, a part of the government and what ministries are how would you integrate them into the government keep in mind that Afghanistan has moved forward we have universities we have girls education we have millions of people millions of kids going to school during the Taliban time in our village it's a remote village on Pakistan border in, in Jalalabad in Nigarhar there was only one school and now we have 37 schools and these 37, seven of them are girls uh, high schools. And uh, my niece is one of the uh, teacher in there and I went to that school and uh, uh, I saw the kids and they, you know, they had pictures of like uh, some famous girl, uh, Afghan girls and saying that we want to be this woman and we want to be that woman. So how, uh, uh, th these progress have been made in all these 18 years. I mean, uh, we know that Afghanistan is the new in the news. There is a lot of uh, bad news coming from Afghanistan. But on the other hand, there is something good happening too in Afghanistan. There is uh, we have a we have a vibrant uh, civil society who protest the government, who protest uh, uh, about different issues, about election fraud and everything. And it's part of the democracy, and it's happening. The, 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 the big question is that how would you fit the Taliban into this narrative that Afghanistan has changed? Uh, I mean, like, you know, they, they, they would uh, argue that they also have changed. But on the ground, as I mentioned before, nothing has changed. I mean, like, uh, uh, there's a recent report of, I think, USAP. Uh, they, they did a, a survey in Helmand and Kandahar and Uruzgan provinces, and they there are uh, Taliban who are uh, ruling those places. They are saying that they are not going to accept women going to uh, parliament or women being part of the parliament. And I think uh, uh, we have a huge number of parliamentarians, women parliamentarians in Afghanistan. And, uh, and uh, to be honest, there are more, uh, there are more uh, patriotic than our men member of parliament so excluding them from the parliament would be another disaster for afghanistan what uh, and excluding the afghan government from coming back to the talks uh, is a is a huge problem because you know we you are talking there is a and b talking and you are telling c to give uh, this a person a chunk of uh, your house and they'll say, oh, wait a minute, I was not part of this deal. Uh, how do I know wh what's happening? So if you are not talking to me, uh, the Afghan government, and then you coming to sign an agreement with me, a deal with me, how would I know this, the specific of that deal? So excluding the Afghan government from these talks is a huge disaster because the decisions that they are going to be making will not uh, be implemented in the Afghan government or the Afghan uh, soil. The other problem is the terror networks that I mentioned before. The Taliban or any other group cannot uh, force their fighters to stop joining another, uh, another terror group or uh, doing whatever they want to do. They would go on and join th these militants uh, from Pakistan or the, you know, these Kashmiri militants and these other militants that uh, even like in the, this Iranian Jeshul al Adil is there. So there, there is a lot of uh, potential for the uh, foot soldier, for uh, Taliban soldiers to go and join other groups. Only a comprehensive radicalization program and that would go parallel, uh, parallel with the uh, negotiations could help stop uh, the increase and the spread of t uh, terror in that area. The other problem is that ISIS, ISIS is waiting in the wing in, in Afghanistan. And I'm, I'm from Nangarhar, which is badly influenced uh, by the Taliban. I was just doing, day before yesterday, when I was coming here uh, for our web and uh, Facebook, I was, I was mentioning it yesterday in a TV interview. Uh, there is a woman, 75 years old woman, and she is from Koch district in Nangarhar. Her three sons were beheaded by ISIS, 
and her three grandsons who were shot dead in front of her and they were not lit to have funerals for those people. And she has 40 orphans in her house. I edited the story, I edited the video, and it's devastating. I mean, like, these ISIS fighters, they are there and they are brutal. They will not stop at anything. So they are waiting for these negotiations to happen. And either it succeeds or not, they will have a part of it. Because, you know, they know that there are, there are radical Taliban, that they would, be, they would become part of this ISIS. Because they, the, the ISIS group is, you, you can name them anything, but they are local people. You know, they, they are coming from, they are Pakistani Taliban, former Pakistani Taliban, who have joined ISIS, and now they are part of ISIS. And then there, there are like the <coughs> Afghan Taliban and Afghan uh, radicalized youth, they have joined the ISIS. So they have network with each other. And the Taliban, it's, it's, uh, it's like playing a role of the father of these groups. So it, it is giving and providing opportunities to each group to flourish. And, this, uh, and, and, and the governments around us in Afghanistan, uh, in the region, Iran has its own interest, as mentioned by Fatma before, and then Pakistan, uh, Taha mentioned it clearly, uh, they also have their own interests. They are also seeing which way the, you know, the waves are going. So they, they will ride the waves that are going in the right direction for them. So they, they, will, they will use these opportunities coming from these uh, talks. And even though they will take credit for bringing the Taliban into the negotiations table, but unless there is no comprehensive program of de-radicalization, of de-networking, and stopping their funding, uh, this problem is not going to go away anywhere. The solution uh, is that the U.S. could pressure the countries that are funding the Taliban and are friend with the Taliban uh, with different meanings. Uh, they, they, there could be military uh, pressure on the Taliban, could be military pressure put on the Taliban because the Afghan soldiers are uh, having heavy sacrifices in this fight. So why not help them to curb and pressurize the Taliban uh, on the ground so they are ready to talk uh, on the negotiation table. So these are some of the points that uh, uh, should be implemented, put pressure on the regional countries that they are helping. Hello, sorry. Cool.